Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. I'm Robin and in today's video, I have three recipes for your instant pot or your crock pot that are perfect for cozying up during the fall season. This first recipe is for instant pot pork tenderloin and this came from the recipe teacher and I will have a link in the description box below so that you can get all of the instructions and details. It was formulated for the instant pot but you could put this in your crock pot as well. The instructions for the crock pot will be basically the same. The cook time will change however. You will cook it on low for four hours or on high for six. I'm using a one and a half pound pork tenderloin that I have cut in half so that it will fit into my instant pot better. And then I have coated it with a little bit of olive oil and a dry rub that is made up of brown sugar, ground pepper, salt, paprika, onion powder, and garlic. Next, I'm searing it in my instant pot by setting my instant pot on the saute mode, adding a little bit of olive oil, and then just letting it brown on all sides. If you want to make this for the crock pot and you have an insert in your crock pot that is stovetop safe, you can go ahead and brown it the same way in the same insert. If not, you can use a separate pan like a cast iron pan to sear the outside. This crust that is created really seals in the juices and adds a lot of flavor, so I recommend not skipping that step. When all sides of the pork are browned, press cancel on your Instant Pot and remove the meat to a plate. Then you can add chicken stock to the pot and use a wooden spoon to scrape up all of the bits from the bottom of the pot. After that, add some Worcestershire sauce and liquid smoke. Place the meat directly into the liquid, secure the lid, and set the vent to sealing. Pressure cook on high pressure for just three minutes. When the cycle is complete, allow the pressure to release naturally for 15 minutes. To go along with the pork tenderloin, I am just preparing some sweet potatoes to go in the microwave. So I'm using a fork to poke holes in all of the sweet potatoes. And while they are cooking in the microwave, I'm just slicing up a cucumber. This simple cucumber salad is a go-to for me. My family loves it and it only takes a couple of minutes to throw it together. So I just toss the cucumber slices with one of our favorite dressings. This Brianna Homestyle Blush Wine Vinaigrette Dressing pairs perfectly with the cucumbers. It's just a little bit sweet and that with the tartness of the vinegar it's just delicious and we love it and I know that your family is going to like it too and it's perfect with a pork tenderloin. When the cook time is complete, remove the meat to a plate and let it sit for five minutes before slicing. To make the gravy after you've removed the meat, press cancel on your instant pot and then start the saute mode. Scoop out about three tablespoons of the liquid into a separate cup and add two tablespoons of cornstarch. Mix well until the cornstarch is dissolved and then slowly pour that mixture back into the liquid in the pot. Once it starts to boil, press cancel. Mix well and the sauce will thicken into a delicious gravy. Whether you make this in your instant pot or your crock pot, you're going to spend very little time prepping in the kitchen. And the sides that I've chosen to go along with it are super easy as well, and my family love this meal. Next up is butternut squash soup. This is the quintessential fall recipe in my mind. It has all of those warm and cozy flavors that remind you of fall. I'm going to show you how to make it in the instant pot, but you can make it virtually the same in your crock pot just by increasing the cook time. 
So you're going to need to set your crock pot for about four hours on low or six hours on high. Basically, I start with my Instant Pot by caramelizing some onions in some butter until they are soft. Add one medium butternut squash that you've cut into cubes. Mine was about two pounds. Add a teaspoon of fresh ginger. I really like using this pre-frozen ginger. It's so convenient and I just find it at my regular grocery store. And I like to grate in some fresh nutmeg. You can use pre-ground nutmeg as well, but the freshly grated will give it a flavor that can't be beat. You can use four cups of either vegetable or chicken broth in this recipe. I'm using a chicken stock concentrate. It's called Better Than Bouillon Roasted Chicken Base. I really love this brand. They make a vegetable and a beef one as well. It's seasoned, so it's got a lot of extra flavor. It's gluten-free, and it's also shelf-stable, so you can keep it in your pantry until you open it. This really makes a difference in the flavor in this recipe, so if you haven't tried it, I'm recommending it. Secure the lid on your Instant Pot and make sure that the steam valve is set to sealing and then cook it for five minutes on high pressure. When the cook time is complete, you can either do a quick release of pressure or allow the pressure to release naturally. Then blend with an immersion blender or in batches in a blender or food processor. Stir in the coconut milk and then adjust the salt and pepper to taste. This is such a rich and creamy, delicious soup. I like to make it a little bit on the thin side. If you like it thicker, then just use less broth. We like to serve ours topped with pumpkin seeds and either non bread or your favorite gluten free bread or crackers. I will have the complete recipe both for the Instant Pot and the Crock Pot in the description box so you can cut, paste, and print if you like. The third recipe is for split pea soup, and this one is a meatless version. Most recipes that I have seen call for ham, and while wow, that's delicious, and if you want to, you could add it to this recipe, this recipe is still full of flavor and delicious without, so it can easily be made vegetarian or vegan. The original version of this recipe was designed for your crock pot. I'm actually making it in the Instant Pot because I didn't get my act together early enough in the day. And so when I was pressed for time, I thought this will work in the Instant Pot and it did. So I'm gonna have the instructions for both down in the description box so you can cut, paste, and print if you like. Set the Instant Pot to saute mode and saute the onions, carrots, and celery until they are soft in a little bit of oil. Then add the potatoes, garlic, and the spice mixture made of dry mustard, cumin, sage, thyme, and three bay leaves. Then add eight cups of either vegetable, chicken, or beef broth. And this time I'm using the Better Than Bouillon Roasted Beef Base, and this adds so much flavor to this recipe, but you can use the broth of your choice. Instead of mixing together the bouillon concentrate and the water, I just add the water directly to the pot and then I measure out the amount of beef bouillon that I want to use in the recipe and that saves me from washing another container. Then add the split peas that have been washed. And this happens every time. When I wash the split peas and leave them to drain, they sort of all stick together and come out in one big clump. So I'm really careful when I add them to the Instant Pot so I don't splash everywhere. But once they get in there, they break up really easily. So I give everything a quick stir. Mm -hmm. 
secure the lid on your Instant Pot, make sure that the vent is set to sealing, and then set to pressure cook for 15 minutes. For recipes like this, where the soup will be very thick, rich, and creamy, I like to do a natural release. Sometimes the hot liquid can spurt out of the sealing vent when you do a quick release. So to be on the safe side, I just always do the natural release method, and that way we are safe and we don't create a big mess. The split peas come out perfectly whether you do it in the instant pot or the crock pot. They add such a creamy velvety texture to this soup. If you like to take it an extra step, you can use an immersion blender to get it really blended, but my family kind of likes this chunkier version and of course it saves a step. I'll admit that this soup is not the prettiest, but it tastes amazing. If you use a more clear broth like a vegetable or a chicken instead of the beef, it will have a little bit prettier of a green color from the split peas. But this soup, as I said, tastes great. My family loves it. And served along with some bread or crackers, it's a wonderful one pot meal that freezes beautifully as well. So make a double batch. I hope that your family enjoys these three cozy fall recipes as much as mine does. And I hope that it makes your life in the kitchen a little bit easier using your Instant Pot or Crock Pot this fall. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. Also share with someone who's looking for some recipe ideas as well. If you're new here, I want to invite you to subscribe. It's easy and absolutely free. Just click on my picture. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I look forward to talking with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week.